Hello, uh, welcome to Campbelltown Free Church for Psalm of the Week. Uh, we're looking at Psalm 64 this week. Uh, let me read it for you. For the director of music, a Psalm of David. Hear me, O God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from that noisy crowd of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent man. They shoot at him suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see them? They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the mind and heart of man are cunning. But God will shoot them with arrows. Suddenly they will be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake their heads in scorn. All mankind will fear. They will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. Let the righteous rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart praise him. This is a psalm of two halves, verses 1 to 6 and verses 7 to 10. In the first half of the psalm, David is under attack from his enemies. They do not attack him openly, but snipe at him from the shadows, using innuendo to smear his character, verses 3 and 4. They boast that they will not be caught, hiding behind how they have launched their whispering campaign of misinformation from the shelter of anonymity, verses 5 and 6. How wrong they are. They have not got away with it because the psalm pivots on the opening words of verse 7. Words that should strike fear into the hearts of David's enemies. But God. God promises to protect his people. Genesis 12, the start of verse 3. Whoever curses you, I will curse. So the rest of the psalm shows how God swings into action against David's enemies bringing their attack on his king to an abrupt end. Verses 7 and 8. But God will shoot them with arrows. Suddenly they will be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. God's protection is designed to make people sit up and pay attention. Verse 9. All mankind will fear. They will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. Outsiders will realise that they cannot mess around with this God because he judges sin and those who attack his people. As they witness God's protection, his people will put their trust in him because their God watches over them. Verse 10, let the righteous rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart praise him. I'm sure you notice the contrast in the two halves of this psalm as God reverses the experience of his king. David's enemies use their tongues against him, verse 3, but their own tongues, their own words are used against them, verse 8. David's enemies aim their words like arrows, verse 3, but God's arrows will shoot them, verse 7. David's enemies have no fear of God, verse 4, but when God judges them, everyone will fear God, verse 9. David's enemies brag about the cunning cleverness of their own minds and hearts, verse 6. But when the dust settles, it will be the upright in heart who are cheering, verse 10. David begins full of dread in verse 1, but in the end, he will rejoice, verse 10. This reversal in the experience of God's Psalm 64 king points forward to an even more significant reversal in the experience of Jesus, God's ultimate king. Because of his claim to be God's son, the Jewish religious establishment reckoned Jesus deserves to die for the sin of blasphemy. The Romans execute Jesus for the crime of rebellion because he claims to be a king. When he hangs on the cross, it seems that even God has forsaken him as Jesus dies under the under the darkness of God's curse and judgment. As his lifeless body is buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, it appears that death has defeated Jesus. 
but God raises Jesus from the dead. And in doing so, completely reverses everything that seems to be true of Jesus when he died. In the resurrection, God declares Jesus to be the Son of God, exactly who he claims he is. In the resurrection, God announces Jesus to be God's King, the conqueror of all his enemies. In the resurrection, God proclaims Jesus to be the saviour of sinners, accepting his sacrificial substitutionary death on behalf of sinners. In the resurrection, God states that Jesus is the giver of life, who has defeated death and gives eternal life to all who trust in him. And when we see how God has brought about this complete reversal in Jesus' experience, is it any wonder that the righteous rejoice in the Lord and the upright in heart praise him? But we too have experienced a similar reversal in our Christian experience. In Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3, Paul outlines what things were like for us before we became Christians and we were not in a good place. Because of our deliberate failure to do what God wanted and because we had deliberately done what God told us not to do, we were spiritually dead, Ephesians 2 verse 1. Because we allowed ourselves to be manipulated by everyone and everything around us and because we allowed ourselves to be manipulated by our own selfish desires and attitudes we were spiritually enslaved not free at all but under the oppressive control of the devil Ephesians 2 verse 2 and the start of verse 3 because he is justly hostile to sin in all its horrible shapes and forms God was against us treating us as our enemies under his completely fair judgment, the end of Ephesians 2 verse 3. However, everything has changed for us and that change is flagged up by those two pivotal words. You find them again at the start of Ephesians 2 verse 4, but God. In his great love and mercy, God has on the basis of Jesus' death and resurrection brought about a complete reversal in our experience. God has raised us up from our spiritual death and given us new life in Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 5, God made us alive with Christ. God is no longer angry with us, but welcomes us into his presence. Ephesians 2 verses 6 and 7, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. God has rescued us from our spiritual slavery and given us freedom to experience all that his lovingly, he's lovingly planned for us, the good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do, Ephesians 2 verse 10. And when we grasp how God has brought about this complete reversal in our experience, is it any wonder that we rejoice in the Lord and that we praise him? Let's pray for a moment. O Lord, the God of our salvation, we rejoice in you because you have saved us. We praise you for your great love and mercy towards us because you have brought about a complete reversal in our experience. May the Holy Spirit give us a greater understanding of your word so that we might grasp more fully what you have done for us in and through Jesus, your Son. O oh Lord, the God of our salvation, as we increasingly appreciate how you have made us spiritually alive, given us spiritual freedom and rescued us from your just judgment, may we, in spite of all the obstacles in our way, gladly, consistently, in your power and for your glory, carry out those good works you have prepared in advance for us to do. Hear us, O oh Lord, the God of our salvation because we pray as we always do, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for listening. May God bless you and may he be with you in the incoming week.